Here we go. This is what a joke. A terrible State of the Union address, as usual, full of lies, misinformation, totally missing and totally ignoring um, the major, major points uh, of what's really important um, uh, of what's going on. Totally ignored Robert Ford with 700 bits. Thank you, Robert Ford. Really appreciate it. Um Biden trying to claim at the very beginning that, uh, oh, we're able to be here now, uh, even with COVID because of the progress we've made in the last year. And Biden pretending uh, to be the reason why we are able to have uh, the State of the Union without COVID rules. Old Gamer Mike. Boom. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate the five tier one subs. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Mike. Um, it's just absolutely, and then this whole idea that, okay, COVID's not that big of a deal to where, you know, we don't have to wear masks and we're going to have hundreds of people in this big room and it's not that big of a deal. We don't have to wear masks, but it's a big enough deal where we don't want to have anybody here. We don't want to have too many people here. That's why we're going to have limited, limited access to, to this area. So, and, and then what he, what he didn't say about COVID he didn't say about COVID about how outlandish the reaction was, how absurd this was, how it's destroyed liberty, how it destroyed the economy, how it was used and pushed for partisan reasons, how there was so much misinformation from the left about it, um, how it was used to violate American civil rights and civil liberties. Never mentioned anything about that other, but, but just falsely claiming as if Biden had anything to do with COVID cases and COVID death rates going down. Hey, Biden, you moron. The reason very few people are dying from COVID right now is because Omicron is not as dangerous. And guess what? Everybody that was going to die from COVID already died because it always that's how viruses and pandemics work. They kill off the vulnerable people first. And that's how they that's why there's called a such thing as called a curve, Biden. Don't just expect actually people to think that Biden's the reason COVID's not that bad. And then uh, it, it's insulting for to hear people like Biden Mentioning the U.S. Constitution and freedom and, and criticizing tyranny, Biden is a tyrant. Um, Biden multiple times referenced the, the Constitution and freedom, and it's just outrageous. Biden doesn't give a crap about the Constitution. Biden tried to force a vaccine mandate on uh, the American people. Ha Thankfully, we had a Supreme Court that struck him down, uh, but don't, don't don't give me this crap from Biden. Oh, yeah, I, I, I support freedom and I support the Constitution. Complete lies, empty words, just completely misinformation. It's just it's insulting to hear somebody like Biden actually pretend to care about freedom and the Constitution. I can't believe he has the gall to even say that. How stupid does he think we are? How stupid does he think the viewers are to actually think that Biden cares about the Constitution and the freedom after what he's done? Give me a break. And then, uh, and then, yeah, he 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 spent a lot of time on Russia, 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 but no mention of China, no mention of um, China at all. Just as if as if Russia is the big threat in the world. It's absolutely outlandish. Not a single word about China. I don't think the entire. And actually, I've got here towards the end of my analysis here. I'm going to go through a thing, a, a list of things that I wrote down that were not included in the State of the Union address. Okay. So what's not included in the State of the Union address, we're going to get to. But uh, th this whole obsession with, with Russia, I thought, was a little bit um, short-sighted. He lied multiple times. Lied multiple times throughout the, the speech. One of the most egregious lies was that the Trump tax cuts, and, and it was so small and so petty. Here's Joe Biden. He's been president for a year, and he's sitting there lying to try to take cheap shots at Trump. It's like, dude, get over it. We know you don't like Trump. There these demo it's it's Trump derangement syndrome. It's just like watching Meet the Press every Sunday where it's Trump, 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 Trump. Not a word about Biden. Biden lying and saying that the Trump tax cuts only helped the top one percent. Complete lie. In fact, the Trump tax cuts actually cut taxes for over eighty percent of Americans. Over eighty percent of Americans took more money home. Um, when with because of lower taxes, and so Biden lying about the Trump tax cuts and and, and throwing in this cheap shot at, at Trump with a lie about the Trump tax cuts, 
just really small, really weak, really, really pathetic uh, on Biden's part. And then for Biden to brag about the economy and talk about how great the economy is and record breaking job creation and the strongest growth rate in 40 years and all blah, blah. Biden, nobody is buying it. Nobody think like. Biden, duh, we know you we just came out of a pandemic where we had freaking lockdowns and crap like that. Of course, there's going to be a lot of jobs created because we're rebounding from the pandemic. Don't get, it's like Biden trying to take credit for the virus naturally going away. Biden trying to take credit for jobs coming back after we came out of a, a economic uh, slowdown from a pandemic. It's just so stupid. And it's like, dude, Biden, you've done nothing but harm the economy. Don't give me this crap about you trying to take credit for the economy and try you trying to take credit for job growth. The, the, the people that deserve credit for the job growth are the businessmen and women in America who created jobs in spite of Biden in the White House. Um, absolutely outlandish. How stupid does he think people are to actually actually believe Biden was really great on the economy and that's why we have such a great economy? Give me a break. It's not even good right now. Um, and then, uh, you know, what's really what I actually one of the big takeaways I thought was how little he had to celebrate. He had he, there's nothing there. Biden hasn't really accomplished anything. You just gave your first State of the Union address, Biden, and you can't even name really anything you've done. All that you can mention are the American Rescue Plan and bipartisan infrastructure, which uh, are literally just blowout spending packages that Congress passes every six months. Every six months or three months or however often Congress passes a big spending package and, oh, it's an omnibus bill or it's a continuing resolution or it's a stimulus package or it's a stimulus uh, infrastructure maker that's not a comp an accomplishment that's not an accomplishment at all congress does that all the time those are disasters the, the, all they do is result in waste and fraud and sending our country closer to bankruptcy and cranking up inflation but that's all biden's got he's got nothing i mean he really has nothing it's just it's amazing to, to have a president give a State of the Union like that and really not have anything to talk about. He's got no accomplishment. He hadn't done anything. Um, it was really pretty obvious, I thought. Um, and then he made he took another cheap shot at Trump saying, we're no longer going to have infrastructure week. Now we're going to have an infrastructure decade. It's like, dude, that's, a, that's one of the media and the Democrats' favorite criticisms of Trump is that, that Trump had infrastructure week. And he did multiple infrastructure weeks, but never passed an infrastructure bill. It's like, dude, he never passed an infrastructure bill because Democrats don't give a crap. And, and Democrats wanted to wait until there's a Democrat president to pass an infrastructure bill. Duh. It's, it's no more complicated than that. Uh, but it's just so small. It's like, dude, Biden, quit taking cheap shots at, at Trump and, and just false ones too, like pointless ones. Um you know what? One thing I thought that was kind of interesting, there was a whole section of the State of the Union, an entire section where Biden was basically all on board uh, against free trade. He opposes free trade now. He doesn't believe in, in trade, I guess, anymore. And this is, I think, one of Donald Trump's sort of lasting influences. Donald Trump was very opposed to free trade and, and we want to make everything in America and made in America, made in America. And like, I understand that to some extent. Um, especially when we're when our jobs are going to places like China that are sort of evil communist dictatorships. But overall, I don't think this this whole idea of getting rid of and, and Joe Biden was saying, like, we want everything to be made in America. We want the from the from the surface of an aircraft carrier to the steel on the side of a highway rail guard. Everything is going to be made in America. He said something like that. And it's like, dude, are you are you economically illiterate? Free trade is a great thing. Like, I'm I'm sorry, but like, it's like you're not you're not willing to say that we need to cut off from China because they're evil and they're communist and they're trying to destroy America, and they are pushing communism worldwide and they're um, dangerous and everything else, and and we should cut off from them and not send jobs. No, no, that's fine. You're you're okay with that, but you want to uh, you don't want to do anything about China, but you want to say that we shouldn't have any kind of trade. I just thought that it's just, it's all politics, right? Joe Biden, since when has ever Joe Biden been anti-free trade? Like Joe Biden's been a free trader his whole life because everybody's free trade because free trade is economics 101. You know, it's, it's basic economics. Free trade is good for everybody. 
Now, obviously, I don't believe in trading with China, um, for example, but like free trade as a principle is good. But I guess uh, Joe Biden is no longer free trade. Um, I guess that polls well or something like that. But I thought that was very kind of just stupid. Um, and then, of course, you know, most uh, and, and this is this is sort of typical for presidents, but massive calls for new spending. Um, talking about investment in R&D, of course, the federal government doesn't do investing. They spend the American people's money. They don't invest. Investing is when you put money into a business hoping to get a return on that money. That, that, that's not what the government does. The government spends money. <laughs> Um, but, uh, m most of what Biden had to do, of course, calls for, uh, new spending and they're a big part of some, what was missing from the, the state of the union has to do with that. Um, oh my gosh. And then the inflation section, like that's the big issue. The the major issue right now in the country is inflation. That's the number one. That's the elephant in the room. That's what, ev that's, what's destroying us right now is inflation. And Biden's section on inflation was so stupid. He literally blamed inflation on COVID and companies not having enough workers uh, to, to make products. It's like, Joe Biden, you moron. That's not why we have inflation. We have inflation because of your insane global warming policies, anti-energy policies that are driving up the cost of energy, that are making it more expensive to move goods. Um, you're, we have inflation because of the Federal Reserve easy money policy for decades and decades, 0% interest, quantitative easing, et cetera, et cetera. We also have inflation because runaway, massive blowout, federal government spending and deficits and debt. And not a word about any of that. So the big number one issue that we that we it would be nice to see the president address not a word not not one word of it, not one word just just oh yeah no uh, all we gotta do is cut costs cut costs it was insane like that's this whole like they must have done polling they must have done polling that says yeah if you say you're gonna cut costs oh that does really well people love it the American people love it cut costs guys cut costs. <laughs> Yo, digital. Thank you, digital. Appreciate the 290 bits coming in hot. Thank you, digital. Cut costs, guys. Cut costs. He's, he must have said cut costs like 20 times. It's, it's like it's just become a meme now. Um, it's just like, and here's the other thing. When the government starts saying we need to cut costs, we need to lower costs. Um, it's just that, that's when you need to start running and grab your wallets and, and, and start freaking out because something bad is really going to happen. The, the the government does not lower costs or cut costs on anything. All they do is drive up costs and make everything more and more expensive. Um, absolutely absurd. And then and then uh, his whole idea for cutting costs on medicine, literally price controls. He wants to put in place price controls. I guess we've totally, I guess, I guess as a country, we've totally lost all of our free trade or um, uh, free market economics, right? So now we no longer believe in trade. We don't believe in trade and we don't believe um, in capitalism or free markets. We believe in um, protectionism and price controls. That's a recipe for economic disaster. Absolute disaster. Claiming health care costs are down $2,400. He said something about the American Rescue Plan lowering health care costs by $2,400 per year for the average American family. Total lies, complete and total lies. Health insurance costs are through the freaking roof. It is so expensive. Health insurance is outrageously expensive right now. It is absurd how expensive health insurance is. And so it's just like this whole thing about like pretending the economy is great, pretending that health insurance costs are down. It's just like, who? what planet are you living on? And who do you expect to actually be believe this stuff? The government has done nothing but increase massively costs in our healthcare sector. And you've got Biden up there wanting more and more involvement and then and then trying to take credit and trying to brag about the government lowering health care costs. It's honestly it's pure gaslighting. It's just out and out gaslighting. It's uh, maybe it polls well or whatever. I don't know why you would say that, because I don't can't imagine who would possibly believe that. But. Um, that's where we're all, and then, oh yeah, he wants to cut costs of, of childcare. Cut the costs, guys. Cut costs. Cut costs of childcare. Um, no, we don't need the federal government in being involved in childcare. Nowhere in the U.S. Constitution does it say the federal government should be focused on childcare. 
Maybe the federal government should be focused on what it's supposed to be doing, not child care. They're going to F that up to unbelievable amounts. The, the moment the federal government gets in, into child care is the moment the prices skyrocket and the quality goes way down. Um, and then claiming that anybody making over 400 or making under $400,000 a year will not pay a dime in taxes. That's a lie. That's been proven numerous times in all, all kinds of different Biden proposals that lots of people making under $400,000 will have their um, taxes go up under lots of different Biden proposals. That's just a pure lie. And of course, it doesn't in take into account inflation. Inflation is a massive tax and that's hurting lots of people making under $400,000. Um, and then and then saying that, yeah, we can get everything we want by just raising taxes on corporations and just, oh, don't worry, guys, don't worry. We'll just raise taxes on corporations. That's not going to impact you. Don't worry. We'll just we'll just crank up taxes on corporations that that's not going to impact any individuals. There's just this huge pile of money out there in, in corporations and the government will just come in and take it. And that's not going to impact you. It's not going to impact your you know, your investments, it's not going to impact anything. It's not going to impact your price of goods. Don't worry, guys. It's just, it's, it's absurd. And it's, it's totally dishonest. Um, I'm sorry, Joe Biden, but you cannot have, um, you cannot have uh, massive, you know, welfare, European style welfare without having European style taxes where you massively tax um, the middle class and the, the working class. Um, it's, it's just dishonest. The real big picture here, I should have said this sort of at the beginning of my video, um, but the big picture here is really that this is just Joe Biden trying to do a massive shift, a massive shift away from the radical left uh, governance that he did for the first year. So Joe Biden in this, his first year in office has been a hardcore leftist. I mean, and you saw some of that come through through tonight, but... Um, you know, I think you're seeing a major shift here on, in the Biden administration away from what they were pushing for the last year to now all of a sudden, you know, now all of a sudden, oh my gosh, now all of a sudden um, Joe Biden cares about the deficit and Joe Biden wants to fund the police and, you know, Joe Biden doesn't believe in mask mandates anymore and we can go back to normal and have schools open and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and he cares about, you know, competitiveness and free markets and freedom and all the stuff. And it's like, it's just so obvious that this is a, a a change to try to get him on the right side of the the polling for 2022. Um. So and so I I assume the progressives are going to be outraged at at, at Biden's um, State of the Union because if you're a progressive, oh, if you're a, if you're one of these defund the police progressives, like you've been wanting to defund the police. You've been wanting to defund the police and Biden just out in the State of the Union says, nope, we're not defunding the police. I mean, I, I, you've got to be uh, you've got to be outraged as a progressive. Um, and then, yeah, oh, yeah. Biden trying to care about lowering the deficits. It's like, really, dude, you expect people to believe that. Oh, and then he named uh, he named like this a uh, DOJ pandemic prosecutor or prosecutor for pandemic fraud. Um, you know, what's funny about that is that like, dude. The reason that you need a prosecutor for pandemic fraud, because guess what happens when you have the federal government pass trillions of dollars in spending that just gets passed out to people? You get massive amounts of fraud, just like you get massive amounts of fraud in Medicare and Medicaid and every other government program. There's insane amounts of fraud, and that, that's the actual fraud, like the actual criminal fraud, not even talking about the um, just like the special interests, like the insiders that get all this government money and all these packages that is totally legal. Um, but I thought that was hilarious. Like, so he's basically admitting, he's basically admitting that the, what the government did with all this pandemic relief was a complete failure, such a failure. And there was so much fraud. It was the, it was the biggest criminal fraud ever in the history of the world. There's never been a bigger amount of, of criminal fraud in the history of the world because, uh, until the, the PPP program, for example, Hundreds of billions of dollars fraudulently bilked from the American taxpayer because of what the government did with that. And so they basically admitted that. Um, oh, and then his idea for the Pfizer pills and Joe Biden bragging about how he got the most Pfizer pills and nobody's ever ordered as many pills as him. It's like, cool. Yeah, let's let's have more taxpayer dollars go to Pfizer, shouldn't we? Let's have more taxpayer dollars go to Pfizer. That'd be a good idea. 
Um, I loved it. I love the fact that he said we're not we're not we're not defunding the police. We're funding the police. Good, you know, good. It's about time Joe Biden came out, and, and it's like what? That's that's a big a big sign that this is all political and that this is all about 2022 is the fact that Biden includes in the State of the Union address that we're not defunding the police, we're funding the police. Why would you include that in the State of the Union address unless you specifically wanted to show the American people that you are no longer a radical leftist and you're not in favor of these crazy policies and you want to fund the police? It's like you're just you just like, you know, you're like stuck a finger in the eye of progressives just to upset them. Um, but I thought it was great. I mean, good. It's about time that we rejected defunding the police. Um, and then he lied about the gun industry, saying the gun industry can't be sued. That's false. That's completely false. The gun industry can be sued. What you cannot sue a gun manufacturer for is for some random person committing a crime with the gun. You can't go sue the gun manufacturer. And that's for good reason. <laughs> Like the guns are guns are a unique product. Number one, they're the only product um, that's constitutionally protected. Guns are the only product that are constitutionally protected, um, and they're also a product that is very dangerous if used improperly. So, why would you allow anybody to sue? Like, if you're a person and somebody comes and shoots your family, why would you sue the gun manu? Why would you allow them to sue the gun manufacturer? It's not the gun manufacturer's fault. It's the person who shot them. You know, it's it's just it's insane. But so that's the one instance where you can't sue gun manufacturers, um, which makes perfect sense and is a unique situation because they're a constitutionally protected product that's inherently dangerous and it is used improperly um, a, a lot of the time. So this idea, but, but the fact that you can't ever, like if a gun manufacturer actually does something wrong, you actually can't sue them. There's actually been a very big case, um, in Montana where a gun manufacturer was, was sued for, you know, a manufacturing defect in a gun type of stuff and you can't sue them. So that was a complete lie, complete misinformation. Um, and, and, and it obscures the fact that they want anybody who is involved, anybody that's involved in a gun shooting, uh, they want them to be able to sue the gun manufacturers. Well, guess what that does? That destroys the gun manufacturing industry. Every gun manufacturer goes out of business because now every gun manufacturer has to pay out millions of dollars for every single gun death in this country. How stupid is that? Um, and then, uh, of course, I thought it was I thought it was pretty funny that Biden. So it was kind of funny, like the whole thing. Biden was just like kind of like begging Congress to act on this stuff, and then Biden says there's like. There's four unity things where, oh, we've got four four proposals where there's no partisanship. And then Biden, like, begging and pleading for Congress to act, pass something. It was just so obvious that he can't get Congress to do anything. He can't accomplish anything um, because he doesn't have the support of the American people. He has no political capital. Uh, but then he actually called for the voting takeover, the federal election takeover bill again. It's like, Biden, that already failed, you idiot. And you already failed trying to change the filibuster, too. You're not changing the filibuster, Biden, and you're not ramming through a federal elections takeover bill. Quit begging and quit pretending. That had to have been thrown in there as a as a bone for the progressive left because now we can say, hey, no, I brought up. I brought up the federal corrupt elections bill that you guys wanted me to pass. Like, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't have a chance. Oh, and then I thought it was rich. Biden, Biden then mentioned the Disclose Act, too where he uh, he cares about who funds our elections. Isn't it hilarious to see Joe Biden pretending to care about election integrity in the United States and who funds our elections? Joe Biden, the most corrupt president we've ever had, the guy that takes 10% from business dealings that his son does from selling federal office of Joe Biden and, and Joe Biden with business deals in communist China, um, it wants, to, wants us to believe that he's concerned about who funds our elections? Give me a break, Joe Biden. <laughs> it's just it's just preposterous. Yeah, Joe Biden really cares about, you know, money in our election and, and stuff. Oh yeah, Joe Biden did mention securing the border. I'll give him a thumbs up on that. Great. I'm glad. I'm glad that Joe Biden says he wants to secure the border. Great. But guess what, Joe Biden? You actually have to act on it. You actually have to do stuff that makes sense. You can't have wide open borders. That's it's like that's another one of these like totally gaslighting things, um, total gaslighting things where it's like Biden is saying that he cares about 
the border and Biden really says, oh, yeah, we got to secure the border. But yet all of Biden's actions are literally to just open borders, just complete open borders. <clears throat> so it's just like it's it's ridiculous. It's like, Biden, you, you, are, are you expecting like the American people to not have a clue what you're actually doing? I guess he does, because how else could Biden sit there with a straight face and say in the State of the Union address that he actually cares about securing the border? When every single act that he has done has been to lead to open borders and to allow open borders. It's absolutely insane. Um, uh, there was, a, you know, here's the thing. Like, Biden was trying to make it sound like this is a really important moment and this is a historical time. And he even said, this is a sacred place as our capital. It's not sacred. The capital is not sacred. You know what's, sac you know what's sacred? Religious places. Religious places are sacred. The only way the capital is sacred is if politics or the government is your religion, which it is for a lot of these leftists. Uh, but then he was saying that this is the moment the character of our generation is formed. No, it's not, Biden. No, it's not. This is a meaningless moment. This is not a big deal. This is your stupid first state of the union where you haven't accomplished anything and the, the country is crumbling all around. And, um, you know, we're here fighting for, for the American people to finally you know, start paying attention to what's going on in this country and stop voting for Democrats. It's like, that's, that's, a, that's what's going on. It's not some great moment of historical importance with Joe Biden giving his first state. Nobody cares. It's not a big deal. Doesn't matter. Um, all right, here's what was not in the State of the Union address, though, okay? And this is more important than what was in it. And this is what should have been in the State of the Union address. Not one mention about U.S. energy independence. Not a word about U.S. oil and natural gas and coal and other energy and nuclear power. Not a word about nuclear power. Um, that's the real story here. And, and Biden's obsessed about global warming and said global warming and windmills and solar panels. And he specifically said windmills and solar panels, which is all the Democrats care about because that's who they're financially tied with. Uh, but but not a word about energy independence, not a word about tech censorship, not a word about how we'll, we should never do lockdowns and shutdowns again or, or any kind of mandates, not a word about cancel culture and how terrible that is for our society, not one word about civil rights abuses like vaccine mandates um, and other kinds of lockdowns, not one word about the ever-expanding size and scope of the federal government that's infringing on people's freedoms and liberties, not one word about how our society has totally left behind free speech and how as a culture we need to get back into the uh, practice of respecting free speech. Not one word about the government corruption. Um, not one word about how, how corrupt our federal government has become. Not one word about China. Nothing about China and how we should be decoupling and, and disconnecting from China economically. Not one word about how evil China is and how dangerous China is. Um, not one word about how, how China has corrupted American politicians and how a lot of those people in D.C. are bought and paid for by China. Not one word about that. Um, not one word about uh, election integrity and, and getting rid of ballot harvesting and making sure we have voter IDs and making sure we don't do all mail, mail ballot elections and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Not one word about that. Um, and lots of other stuff that was important that have to do with basic freedom notions, uh, basic notions of what Americans' freedoms are and how much our freedoms and our civil liberties are being infringed and violated left and right in this country and how, as a culture and a society, we've really turned our back on basic, basic civil liberties. So, overall terrible stuff.